<laughs> there was something. Yep. And it just popped up on my screen. Did you get it too? Sweet. I'm at Nags Head on the Outer Banks Barrier Islands of North Carolina. And I'm about to d dictate the questions from astronaut Kate Rubens as she answers questions from the Indianapolis Children's Museum in Indianapolis, Indiana. But before, th before I do that, I gotta get wet. Audio's low. Just got a work call too. N9DI, this is NA1SS. How do you read me? Over. So is it coming? Did you guys hear that? N9DR, NA1SS. First question, how do astronauts get the water they need while in space? Answer. Hi, sir, I'm from the space station. That's a good question. We actually recycle almost all of our water. Water's actually pretty heavy. We don't want to have to launch it from the Earth. So we have a water recycling system here that recycles all of our water in space. All right, all right. That was a good answer. Let's get another cool answer. Number two, what experiments are you conducting on the ISS? Answer. Brady, that's a great question. We have over 200 different experiments on the ISS. Some of them are looking at DNA sequencing, and some are even looking at how heart cells grow in space. Over. Question number three. Do you have any free time on the ISS? And if so, what do you do? Hey, Naya, we actually spend any free time we have looking down at the planet below. It's beautiful. Over. Here's a very personal question. How many personal items do you bring with you to the ISS, and what types of items do you bring? Hi, Matthias. We only get about a shoebox size for any of our personal items. I brought some photos, uh, some photos of my husband, and some photos of my dog, and uh, just a few little things to remind me of home. Over. Number five. Do you have plants on the ISS, and if so, how do you grow them? Also, what do you eat? Here is the answer now. Hi, Ethan. We actually have an experiment that I'm going to pack up and put in the freezer and put in the spaceship that we're returning to Earth this week. Um, and it's about plant growth in space. There's no gravity here, so we're trying to understand how the plants know where to grow their leaves and where to grow their roots. But sadly, most of our plants here are for experiments. We don't get a chance to eat too many of them. All of our food is freeze-dried and packaged. Over. All right, all right, all right. Here is a quick question that might have a long answer, or it could if you had more time. How does the lack of gravity affect your body? Hi, Curtis. It's actually got a whole bunch of different effects on the body. It changes how your blood circulates a little bit because it doesn't get drawn down into your feet by the effect of gravity. It can change your vision. It can change your cardiovascular system. It can even change your immune system. We're trying to study all of those on board the International Space Station. Over. Here is an important question. I know you have astronauts from different countries. How do you communicate with each other? Hi, we actually use English. Usually when we're on the U.S. Uh, segment and we use English with our partner astronauts. Uh, those are astronauts from Europe, Japan, and Canada. And sometimes we'll speak in English, sometimes we'll speak in Russian with our cosmonauts. Sometimes we speak in a mixture of both and it sounds really funny to anybody outside. Over. If you're an environmentalist, you might like to hear the answer to this question. What do you do with all the trash you have in outer space? Hey, Annabelle, we don't really have a garbage delivery service that can come get our trash. So we actually pack it up. We try to recycle everything we can, and then we'll, we'll pack it up into a space vehicle, and it'll burn up on reentry. Over. Oh, crap. How long do you train before you are ready for mission? <laughs> Got a little bit more wet than I wanted to there. Hi, Lily. I trained for seven years before I launched, so it's quite a long time. Over. Oh, 
What is it like to sleep in space? It's actually very comfortable to sleep in space. You just float there in your sleeping bag and you can fall right asleep. Over. What is the most difficult task for you to do in space? Woo! <laughs> Hi Brady, so far the hardest thing has been when we do a spacewalk. That's a very long day, we go out the hatch and we're working in the absolute vacuum of space. So it requires all of your concentration and focus. Over. Okay, that was a little close. See, don't want to get that wet. Here is a cool question based on the technology that has come forth in the recent years. What do you do if you have to fix something in space? for a supply vehicle to come deliver the parts to us. But recently we've installed a couple of 3D printers on the space station. So we can actually now print out a part that we need if it's a plastic part right up here on the space station with a 3D printer. Over. What happens to your body while you're in space? Let's see the answer right now. Momentous, most of the physiology effects actually are due to the lack of gravity, and those are the things like the cardiovascular effects, effects on your heart, effects on your blood circulation, but then we also have some effects from space radiation. We're still learning about a lot of these, but if you guys want to be a scientific investigator, we have a lot of room on the space station for all of your experiments. Over. Okay, check this out. Uh, I know I've been kind of silly, but this is a cool question, and the answer is great, and I think it's relevant and important that we all pay attention to it. What is the biggest lesson you have learned while you were in space? I think one of the most important things that I've learned is when I look down on the planet, my sense of perspective has completely changed. So you see an entire continent. I can see in the United States from Vancouver, and then three minutes later, we'll be over New York, it seems like. So the sense of how far away we are from the Earth is really pretty amazing. And also, the fact that you can't really see any, any borders or any geography besides the outline of continents that you would see on a map. Over. All right, one of the last questions. Without the ability to get fresh air into, the, into space, what does the ISS smell like? Well, Curtis, when we first got here, we noticed a little bit of a chemical swell, maybe like a hospital. But actually, over time, you don't even notice it anymore. So I don't smell the ISS as anything different uh, than walking around on the Earth. You just notice that there's no nature smells up here. No wind, uh, no trees, no, no smells of being outside. Over. What advice would you give to kids that want to be an astronaut? Answer, now. Hey, Javier, I would say pick a subject that you're incredibly passionate about and do something that you're really interested in. All of the astronauts that I know have done something that they just thought was the most phenomenally interesting and exciting uh, thing to study, whether it's, it's uh, aeronautics or engineering or science or math. Uh, pick something that you're fascinated by and do that as your career. Over. <laughs> oh my god, that hurt a lot. <laughs> Holy crap. Whoa! Uh, N9BR, this is NA1SS, if I've still got you. Thank you guys so much for joining us on board the station. And it was great to talk to all of you and hear your questions. Over. Some serious currents over here. That wraps it up. I hope you enjoy watching this. I'm John Breyer, KG4AKV73, hasta luego. Thanks for watching Spacecoms. Bye. Have a great day. Always have fun. Later. <laughs> Woo! So, how'd it go? It's over now. Uh, it's it's over, over now. now. It's over. It's over now.